Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. And with this Let's Make we're sort of continuing with our modern urban theme and we're tackling fences. Hey oh, fences? Modern urban? Yes, you know the back of buildings, you know, the backyards, suburbia, those sort of areas. Those big high fences. Now there's a few different fences, in fact there's a lot of fences. Go and Google wooden fence design and you'll see what I mean. But I'm going to tackle a few different ones for you. We're going to tackle a, a white pristine, well not pristine fence, yeah. We're going to tackle an old knackered rustic one and we're going to tackle something that's a little challenging to design. But above all, I'm going to give you the techniques and the painting skills and everything you need to know to come up with modular fence sets that you can add to your existing urban sets and expand them. So with that in mind guys, you know what? We gotta crack on, aren't we? Come on! Right folks, we're gonna start our fences with probably the most simplest of fence, yeah? And it's basically just to get a few techniques down and show you how I'm doing things. Now, we're gonna start off, our building material of choice is the coffee stirrer. Yeah, free from any Costa or Starbucks, or you can buy them in bulk online. Yeah, obviously there's lots of other stirrers and that sort of stuff. You can find alternate materials. Now what I've done is, as you can see, I have a collection of them here. And I've pre-cut these out. And all I've done is I've lined them up and then scored them, then cut them with a pair of scissors. Okay, and if I bring them up, they are literally just the top of the watch clip of the stirrers. So I've kept the rounded end on, yeah, because we're gonna be using that. And they're two inches long. I've used my cutting mat as my cutting guide for this. I, I do a lot of that. Now, on top of that, what we've got is, we have two full coffee stirrers here, and I've taped them down. That was off the suggestion of you guys. And all I'm gonna do is, dead simple, I'm using a little bit of gel super glue, okay? It's quicker, yeah, it dries quicker for me. It's a good firm hold, and so when I'm doing my tutorial stuff, I can fly, I can get it done a lot quicker. If I was taking my time and making a lot of them, I'd probably use PVA because I know I can leave them out to dry because there's a lot of work, sort of drying time, etc. Time between projects. So this is just a simple matter of, I've sort of taped these down. Now I know that I want my fence to be uh, that long, yeah? which is approximately four inches. I think it's bang on four inches actually. Okay, and so what I've done is I've taped these sticks down and I've taped them off over the edge. So what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to glue our slats down, yeah? And then once we've glued our slats down and it's all fixed, we'll be able to un unpeel the tape and just trim the ends, yeah? It's a lot less fiddly. Now, laying them out, it's dead simple. Yeah, I'm gonna start there, blob there, blob there. Yeah, and then just drop this down and align it with that bottom bit there, that that bottom line there, okay? And that's all there is to this technique. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue to lay these all these down along here. And what I'm gonna do is as I lay them down, I'm gonna space them, okay? So, do you see that piece? I'm gonna lay it down into there when I lay my next one down and then I'll get a nice gaps between them. So, I'm gonna crack on with that now. So that's all our slats glued down and it's time to peel off the tape. Yeah, always peel away, yeah, from where you're trying to, <laughs> he says, yeah, from what you're lifting. And then, assuming I haven't super glued it to my desk, there's our fence. Doesn't look beautiful. Right, let's flip it over. Now, normally I would trim these first, but I'm gonna leave those for a little, little while just while we put the rest of the bits together. Now, what I've got here is I've got a couple of pieces of five mil balsa wood. Yeah, square rod, square rod. Square rod. <laughs> okay, now on top of that, you can use, I've heard people in the training act sort of suggest using square. If you can't get hold of balsa wood, get hold of square chopsticks. Yeah, you can use those. And on top of that, don't rem also remember, whenever there's fireworks, go out the next day and go collecting your firewood sticks off the rockets, because they're perfect for terrain building. So I've got two pieces, and I've cut them just, same sort of length, just a few mils shy, yeah, just so they're gonna sit below the slats on there. And then it's just a matter of a little bit of glue. And sticking it on. So that's them glued in place. Next job, I do want to actually just trim these off now. So I'll clip these down. Whoa, shot. 
So that's our piece all trimmed down there. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah? Next job, dead simple, is the bases. Now, when it comes to fences and stuff like that, you don't really want big bases. Normally, I'd go for, the thinnest I'd go for normally would be 3 mil, and we typically work on 5 mil, EPVC or MDF. Now, in this case, I'm using Plasticard. Yeah, Plasticard. So, what I've got is, it's about a 2 mil piece, and all I've done is I've cut a strip, and I've sort of beveled the edges, I've made them pointy. And the, the pointy edges are exactly the length of the fence, okay? Now the pointy edges are really important because what it allows us to do, and if I bring this down here, yeah, and I get this little bit of scrap with the pointy edge on, yeah, if we line up that tip of the fence and we run it straight across the middle, not offset forward, yeah, so it's straight across the middle, what we can do, yeah, is if we, if we, if we have another fence sort of here, it allows us to arrange our fences in all sorts of different ways without there being a gap. Now you can't do this if you round it or you square it. You've got to have like T-junctions and actual meeting places. But if you just want long strips of fences that you can lay out, yeah, in all sorts of pattern, go for a, what do you call it? Go for a, I could sort of call, call it a nose cone. Yeah, but do that. Now the next job is obviously we need to glue this down. So glue again. And the important thing with this bit, as I said before, is I need to make sure that my wood runs from tip to tip, i.e. the fence panels. So it is going to be slightly offset on the base, but that's okay. And there we have it guys, all dry, yeah? Absolutely perfect. Looking gorgeous and dead simple to make as you've seen. Now, before we move on to painting and that sort of stuff, let's make a few other sort of designs and let's show you some other stuff. So, let me get ready and I'll be back in a sec. Right guys, it's time to start a more intricate design, okay? And what we're gonna do is our main sort of building materials of choice for this is the popsicle stick or the lollipop stick. I won't tell you where to get them, you know where to get these. I've got my coffee stirrers, I've taped them down again. Now the important thing is these are taped down so that edge to that edge is two inches. And I've cut my popsicle sticks with a pair of kitchen scissors for that two inch gap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this up in a slatted approach. Yeah, so that's going to get glued down and then I'm going to glue these down on top as a slat, just like that. Okay, and we're going to go along just like that. Now, once again, yeah, you could use PVA, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, you might even want to use hot glue if you've got a detailed hot glue gun. Yeah, but my choice is super glue because it's just quick and easy in this job. So, first one down. Yeah. I've got to make sure I line them up perfectly on the bottom. That's the important bit. So make sure that they're, they're straight, they're lined up perfectly on the bottom. Let that dry. Like that. And then the next job, once it is dry, yeah, is I want to put a blob of glue there, a blob of glue there, a blob of glue on there, and a blob of glue on there. Okay, that's because there's multiple contact points Next, get my next slat, yeah. And this is one of the reasons I use gel super glue because it, it meets between these bonds. Yeah, so line that up. And the next job I've got to do is, I've just got to work my way across and put all these slats in. So I'm gonna do that now. So all my slats are down and it's time to peel again. Yeah, and then pick it up and there's our slatted fence. Okay, now you'll notice it's, I've done a good job of cutting, but it isn't perfect. So what I need to do is a little bit of sandpaper, and this is important for the next part, is I need to just very quickly. Right, that's neating my edges off, yeah, and that's important. Next job is we need to clip these edges off. So these strands off here. So that's all cleaned up now. Yeah, and the next job is we need to attach some supports to it. Now with this one, what I'm going is I'm going for a barbecue skewer. Okay, and I've just cut a couple of pieces, perfect to the right length, and once again, I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue, glue them on. So they're glued on now, and it's coming together lovely, isn't it? Yeah, next job is I wanna dress the top of this. Yeah, I don't want that showing. So I've got a cocktail stirrer, cocktail stirrer, coffee stirrer, 
yeah I've cut it to the exact length to go across the top and I am going to glue it and I'm going to glue it so that it basically sits in line with this okay so a bit of glue across there and then glue that on so that's on yeah and as you can see I've lined it up with this flat edge here okay next job is we need to glue it down once again I've got two mil plastic card I mean if you really wanted you could probably use lollipop sticks to base these quite easily to be perfectly honest yeah I'm just going with what I've been using previously so super glue on here place it on there and there we are all glued down yeah looks good looks brilliant yeah really love this one obviously lots of detail obviously you can use different supports and you can take it from where you are but what I wanted to show you with this one is how you can use the same techniques as we use to make this simple fence to make something a lot more complicated that's going to hold a lot more detail yeah and obviously this is obviously a solid line of sight blocking piece compared to this one you can shoot through the gaps, can't you? Now, uh, obviously, we've done coffee stirrers. We've done lollipop sticks. I think we should do a, a little bit. They're a bit new, new and rather nice, aren't they? Which isn't really sort of, you know, what we expect in our war game. So let's do something a little bit more run down with a bit of balsa wood. Let me get my gear together, guys. Right, it's time to do our more raggedy fence. And for that, we're going to be using balsa wood, okay? Now, obviously, you can see right here that I've already taped down and I've gone for three crossbars on this one, yeah? But there's a bit of work we need to do first. Now, balsa wood, yeah, I've got a video in the Back to Basics. If you're not used to this sort of stuff, it explains all about it. Yeah, I'll throw a link up for it. But what we're going to do is we're going to distress it first. Now, it comes rather smooth, yeah? But with a, a wire brush, what you can do is... You can drag down it, just like that. Yeah, and if I bring that up to the camera, yeah, do you see how that's put that wood grain in it, how it's different from that side to that side? Yeah, this is gonna help us get that sort of raggedy look to it. So the first thing I've gotta do is, I've gotta braise this with my, my wire brush. So that's all rubbed down now. Now I know I, I, this space is a two inch gap, yeah, because these squares are two inches. So it's time to actually cut my panels out. Now when I cut my panels, yeah, you would think that I would do a nice, simple, straight line, straight down there, okay, just to get, you know, all even panels. But I'm not. What I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna do a bit of a, a wavy line. Yeah? And then, on this one, yeah, I'm gonna do a bit of a wavy line, because this is almost perfectly six inches. Couldn't have done that better if I tried. That's a bit too much there, so bring it there, yeah? Don't worry about little mess ups like that. So, put two little lines in it, cut it through. Now they're cut through, you can see we've got sort of raggedy edges to them, yeah? Next job is to split these into actual wood panels. Now I'm just gonna go, literally just down like that. I'm not being perfect over them. Some of them will be bigger than others. So there are all my panels cut. Now the next thing is I'm just going to rearrange them, flip them over. This is so that they don't end up with a nice smooth line like the cutting line we did. Yeah, by rearranging them we end up with sort of odd shaped planks next to each other. Okay, and then obviously next job is just simply to start gluing them down. Yeah, once again we're going, I'm going with super glue just because it's quicker and easier. Yeah, obviously PVA works perfectly well on wood so if you want to go with pva go with that yeah so what i'm going to do is blob on each get my little fence panel and line it up yeah and then it's time to move on to the next panel now I'm going to carry on gluing across, I'll glue all, all across here and we'll take it from there, yeah. Right, they're all glued down in a bit of a haphazard way, yeah. One little thing I want to do now they're nice and fixed is just come along and just at the tops and at the bottoms, give them another little bit of a, an abrasing. Yeah, the reason being is it's just going to help with that sort of worn look now they're fixed down. Yeah. Time to peel. You can't peel that off. Yeah, that side. I'm going to be cheeky. I shouldn't have done it like that. It would have all fallen apart. Right, so there we have our sort of wooden fence panels. Next job is, as before, 
clip off these edges. So there's our edges clipped off and yeah, it's time to attach our support beams. Once again, we've gone with a little bits of balsa wood. I've chipped at them with a blade and I've distressed them with our wire brush. So they, they look a little bit more rustic. Yeah, I suppose I could come in, I could make them look a little bit more rustic just by simply taking edges off just like that. Yeah. Makes them look a little less polished, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'll just quickly do this. So I've just worn those down, they're looking a lot better now. Next job, all we've got to do, glue them on. Yeah, once again, super glue just because it's quick and easy. Yeah. And so they're glued on now, and if I bring it round, it's looking rather good, isn't it? Yeah, I quite like that. Maybe the, the, the struts in between could be a little bit thinner, but I think they're perfectly fine. We'll be okay with these. Right, pull off the little wisps and that sort of stuff, sometimes giving it a quick scrub over with a plastic toothbrush. Yeah, it's a good way of getting rid of these little wisps. Yeah, it's from the abrasion. But the next job we've got to do is we've got to super glue it down. Now, once again, plastic hard. Yeah, a bit of super glue on here. So, super glue on and time to fix down. And once again, yeah, with this one, I'm just going to bring it slightly forward. Yeah, just so that the edges meet those little corner pieces there. And there we have it. Just let it dry. And there we are, all dry. Yeah, and doesn't it look lovely and rustic? Yeah, absolutely knackered. Obviously, yeah, the, you can spend a lot more time on sort of weathering this up. There's plenty of real world examples. And if you want lots of examples of fences, go onto Google Images and just put in wooden fence design. You wouldn't believe how many different designs there are. So there's plenty of inspiration out there. Yeah, I've just showed you the basic techniques and working with it. Now, I could texture up these bases. I was debating it, but it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really add to the tutorial that much. So I'm gonna skip that stage and we're going to skip straight to painting. Now, yeah, when it comes to working with this sort of stuff, I always prefer spray primer. Yes, I could just use house paint and stuff like that, but wood tends to soak it in loads, and so it needs lots of coats. Yeah, whereas a primer will go down and it will seal it, it will it'll give much better coverage, and it'll also toughen it up a lot better. Okay, so I've got three colours. I've got white, yeah, that's white. Okay, and I'm going to use white on, we'll use white on this one, okay? I've then got a fur brown, which is sort of a terracotta. We'll go fur brown on this one. And then I've got a leather brown, which is just a dark brown. And we'll go for, for what sort of brown on that one. And we'll cover a couple of different painting techniques. So my next job is I need to go glove up, mask up, and go spray these and bring them back once I'm done. See you in a sec. That's them all primed up. And as an additional, what I've done is very quickly, I've just painted the bases with a bit of gray. Okay, just to, you know, because they were primed white and brown and, and terracotta. Yeah, so it looks a little bit better, but they're all primed up now. Now, obviously we've got them primed. It's time to start detailing them up. Now I have promised you a video on doing wood. I will do that in the future. That's quite a large involved video, but I can show you some techniques on these. So what we're gonna do is put these two aside for a second. We're gonna start with white. Now when it comes to white picket fences, okay, white is typically pa painted over a, a gray primer. We wanna weather it up a bit. So what I've got is, I've got a kiddie sort of craft brush, a thin set, a synthetic one. Yeah, and I've just dry brushed with it, taken some, some really light grey, and all I'm going to do is do some stippling over it. Now, I'm not trying to stipple all of it, so if I bring that up, do you see the marks compared to here? Yeah, all this does is it just breaks up that whiteness, okay, and you get little bits of primer showing through. The point is, you don't do it uniform, yeah. It doesn't work if it's uniform, it only works if you do it sort of irregular. So I'm going to very quickly just stipple this up. And that's it all stippled up. So if I bring it up, yeah, it's looking weathered already, isn't it? Now I'm going to put that to a side, just let the paint dry. And while that does, we'll move on to the next one, which is a sort of really old and rustic brown one. Now I want to lighten this. I wanted to get a lot more lighter colors into it. So with that in mind, yeah, I've got myself a, a sort of light brown, Dry brushing this time, yeah, so I've got it on. Obviously when you're dry brushing, go against the grain.
Yeah, if I bring that up. You see where we're going with this? Now, obviously, I've just got to crack on, haven't I? So that's the wooden fence dry brushed and it's already looking a lot better. Now that's only one layer. It's time to step it up. And what I've done is I've got a little bit of flesh, okay? A little bit of light sort of flesh and I'm gonna use it as a sort of highlight. Now it may seem strange using flesh, but if you use the same dry brush as the one that you did with the brown, it sort of mixes on the palette, okay? And you get sort of a composite a flesh and the brown and it comes out rather nice it's a better highlight than just normal cream yeah so it's coming together already looking lovely one little tip yeah feel free to put patches in and sort of smudge areas and make some darker some lighter yeah it sort of helps make it look more realistic you know what I mean? Now obviously we've got washes to do on this as well, so yeah, that's the dry, the basic dry brush with the brown and then if we step it up and add that little bit of flesh in there, yeah, whole new piece. Right, I'll finish this off and then we're going to take this, I'm going to put it on that. So I've completed the second stage of dry brushing on this and you can see how that's really brought it out. You see how I've sort of smudged it in places to sort of get different sort of patterns and lightness and darkness on the actual wood rather than it being uniform. Breaking up the uniformity is the key point, yeah, with making it sort of look realistic. Yeah, and that's the back. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, now, this flesh that we've got mixed with our little bit of brown, we've got our terracotta one. Yeah, and what I want to do with this is, I just want a couple of light little points on it. Yeah, and with this sort of stuff, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to represent where it would have got chipped, yeah? You sometimes get this. I know this because my fence panels are terracotta stained and they get chipped and worn around various edges and stuff like that. And you get the bare wood showing underneath, which is what I'm trying to sort of replicate. Yeah, so I'll do a little bit more. That's what it's brought out already. Now it is very subtle, but it's there, okay? Now, I'm going to do a bit more on this. I'll bring it back once it's done, yeah? And here we have it. I've gone a little bit heavier, yeah? And it, I've got that sort of wood chip and scratch look to it, yeah? A couple of little mistakes, yeah? Don't worry about those. We'll go over them with a wash. They'll disappear, yeah? Never worry about making little mistakes. Yeah, it never ruins it. Right, so that's those done. And I think the next thing I need to do is I need to put some washes on them. Okay, so tumble down. So I'm going to get the wash stuff together and I'll be back in a second and we'll get these washed and finished off, eh? So we're all dry and ready for washing, which is where we bring out the final detail in it. Okay, and with white picket fences, what you want to do is you want to pick up this grain. And the best way of picking up this grain isn't actually a brown, it's actually a really subtle black. It'll also give it a lot more shadow into all the recesses, etc. So what we need to do is we need to make a wash. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a cheap and easy, what you call it, sort of hobby wash, which is just water and paint, no flow aid or anything like that. And what I've got here is a little bit of black acrylic. I'm going to get that much paint. Yeah, literally. Tiny amount of paint on my brush to about that much water. And then what you end up with is a wash that's almost see-through when you drag it up. It's only in the deep concentrations where it starts to become opaque, which is just what we want. Now, always when you're doing washes and stuff like that, yeah, start with a little bit no one can see first, just to make sure you haven't screwed up your mix. Yeah, so if we go for this bottom corner, no, I think that's fine. Yeah, if I bring that up, yeah, do you see that? Just enough. Right, so the next thing is, we just need to give it a wash. Which basically means just painting all this stuff over it. So, if I bring that up now, you can see what we're doing with it. Yeah, I'll crack on with this and I'll bring it back when it's done. So here we have it, that's our wash on, and it is looking 
beautiful. Now, obviously, it's still a little bit monotone, so I want to sort of change this up a little. I want to introduce a colour that you don't normally see. So, what I've got here is... Ooh, I did have some water and a bit of green, but I've just got a bit of green. Now, while this wash is still wet, yeah, and it's still liquidy, what I can do is I can play with it a bit. Let me just thin that down a little. And spread that out a bit. Yeah, I can start to add a bit of green. Now, I need to remove these concentrations. It's a bit more challenging to do. This is the challenge of doing stuff live on, on not live, but you know, so as you're, as, as you're filming it, you know, let's give it a go. There we are, beautiful. Right, let's do it again. Remember, the key point is, yeah, keep it watered down. You've already got water on it, so it's a bit like the wet washing we do. Yeah, so I'm going to put one, another little patch up there. Yeah, so this will probably be too concentrated as well. Well, actually, maybe not. I'll just do a little patch there. Beautiful. Now the next one, quick wash out of that. And then what we've got to do is we've got some brown here. I want to mix it with some of that black in there and let's water this down a little bit more than so it's not as strong. Yeah, and all we're going to do is this is for across the bottom. Yeah, obviously, even if you paint your fe fences white, you're going to get sort of moisture, dirt, rain carries dirt in it, you know, mud splashes, all that sort of stuff. Capillary action from the wood, it's just going to bring, you know, that, that dirt up. So just like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this on the other side and a little bit of the green as well, I think. Because that's what it was like with just the wash. Yeah, and then once we've started weathering it up again. Slowly getting better with camera angles. Guys, right, I'll crack on with this. And there we go. One dirty white fence. Lovely. Perfect for urban terrain. Yeah. Right, time to move on to the others now. Now, the next one we've got is we've got our dry brush bit of wood. And the best thing for me to do with this is just to give it a heavy, what you call it, wash of watered down brown. Now, once again, yeah, start somewhere where people can't see it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so give it a coat. So there's our wash on and it's brought out all our grain. Yeah, the next thing I wanna do is I've got my water, I've got a tiny bit of black there. Yeah, I need to water that down a bit more. Don't want it that strong. I want it that strong. And all I'm gonna do is first off across the bottom. You'll notice with how, how sort of like thin it is, it is just a darkener. So I can darken it up where, where it'd be darker at the bottom. Yeah, so I'll bring that up. And at the same time, with a little bit of thin down, I can come in and I can add little patches of shadow in places. Just where, you know, I think it's it needs a little bit more to pop. Yeah, so just like in there. Yeah, it just gives it a little bit more definition. So. Yeah, I'm going to crack on and just darken the bottom of here and just define a few more shadows. And there we go, guys, all washed up. Now, this was simple, just a little brown wash over it. Yeah, and then going in with that little bit of black and just defining the edges. And if you notice carefully, yeah, there's little places where I've come along. And this is literally just put a little bit down, smudge it with your finger. Simple as that. And you can see how I've used it on just above these lines and just under them, just to give them a bit of shadow and definition. Yeah, really easy. And that's just one sort of standard color, just dry brushed and washed. Yeah, you could easily mass produce these and they'd look lovely. And remember, all the other techniques work as well. Now, if we head over to our terracotta one, yeah, all we're gonna do with this is just give it a simple wash of, let's go for brown for this one. Yeah, let me get the brown. Right, there's my wash done. I just threw a little bit of burnt umber back into that little black wash we had. Yeah, and if I bring it out, you can see it's quite strong. Yeah, but not too bad. Now, once again, always test where people can't see. Yeah, that might be a little bit too strong, actually. What do you think? 
Nah, we'll be all right. Right, in for a penny, in for a pound. This is just gonna get a standard wash. So I'm just gonna brush this over and let it fall where it falls. And there you have it, folks. That's blended it in lovely. Yeah, it's a sort of one. You could go heavier if you wanted. Yeah, but, you know, it's just giving it a little bit of shadow where it needs it. Oh, missed a bit. Need to get it in those corners. Gotta get you washing your corners, haven't you? And you wanna avoid those little clump spots. They're not good. Yeah, but looks absolutely lovely. Yeah, so uh, that's it. That's basically painting them up. Next job would be to seal them. I'd actually recommend a spray varnish for sealing something like this rather than watered down PVA. Yeah, watered down PVA will work, but it will darken them. Yeah, and it will soak in a lot of the PVA with them being wood. So my, my suggestion is a spray varnish. Yeah, spray matte varnish would work absolutely brilliant. Okay, now, bases aren't done. Do we need to do the bases? Nah, we're okay on the bases, aren't we? I'll give them a quick little stipple, eh? Just a little tidy up. There you go, bases all done. And if I bring them up very quickly, all I did is stipple them with a little bit of gray. And then I just threw a little bit of brown wash on splodges in places. Yeah, just to break it up a little. Yeah? Right, should we have a look at it? Obviously I had the clump foliage as well, tiny little bits. Remember it's concrete, so you're not gonna have massive a field. So, a white picket fence. Yeah, with our gray stippling, then our subtle black wash, going in with the brown at the bottom to get that staining. Could have feathered that a little bit better, boast what you like. Yeah, and then on the other side. Yeah, and you can see how the little bits of clump foliage they just make it pop, they're, they're spot colours, okay? A bit like when you paint your models, it's a little bit of contrast just to break it up. Now, next up, we'll go for our, our slats. Yeah. Quite a complicated design, but turned out lovely. Do you know what I mean? And a, and, and a good sturdy piece as well. Yeah, so don't dismiss them. If you want something that's gonna last a while, these are going to do, do you well, to be perfectly honest. And then finally, uh, we went through the techniques to sort of come up with something a little bit more rustic. Yeah, a little bit more weathered. Now, these are obviously aren't the only wood painting techniques. I've just given you a few to play with while I, I sort of figure out how I'm going to do a wood painting video for you. Because I want it to be a good one. If I'm going to do it, you know, I need to do it and do it properly. Yeah, so there you are. You can see how mixing in that flesh in with the browns work, the secondary highlights, the little bit of clump foliage, and you can see how it's really easy to put together some awesome terrain. So, let's wrap this up, eh? So there you have it guys, didn't they turn out beautiful? Now remember, it's simple techniques. I went for super glue just because it's quicker and easier, yeah? Probably the better glue to go with is PVA because you can have painting issues with super glue if it gets too far beyond your join, okay? Especially when it comes to washes. But if you have a quick solution, super glue, hot glue also works but can get a bit messy. Now obviously on the materials we've used, we've used balsa wood which is a specialist material, yeah? But most of our materials have been popsicle or lollipop sticks, coffee stirrers. Yeah, we've used a bit of plastic card for a basis. You could use coffee stirrers and that, we're well, not coffee stirrers, popsicle sticks for that if you wanted to. You might need to weigh them down a bit to give it a little bit of stability to be perfectly honest. Okay, now you saw various techniques for laying them out. Obviously the, the designs, there's loads of designs, yeah. I'm not gonna say this is the right way to do a fence because I thought it was the right way to do a pallet and see where that got me. So, go out on the internet, look up wooden fence designs, find some you like, pick your materials and start putting them together. Use that tape to hold your, your, your sort of support rungs, yeah. It makes it a lot easier and batch build these. Yeah, a good pair of kitchen scissors will cut through these things a lot better than snips. You know, snips will work, but there's you can get compression issues with them. And also, with snips, you tend to send a bit flying off into the distance. You could take someone's eye out. I have been known to aim them. <laughs> yeah, now when it comes down to painting, my best advice is prime them. 
okay, and prime them with a spray primer. The reason being is wood soaks moisture. If you're going to go in with an acrylic paint, if you're going to put layer after layer after layer, you can even swell the wood and cause problems with it. Also, if you're using PVA to hold them together, those layers could reactivate it. So, best thing, even if it's just a grey primer, go in, prime it. After that, you know, you've got your stained wood terracotta look. You saw I did that prime with a simple dry brush. Yeah, quick sort of wash. Uh, we've got the, the rustic look. That was a dark brown primer. Dead easy. Couple of the dry brushes going in with a wash. Remember the patches, remember to darken up along the bottom. And then finally with our picket fence. Using that little bit of what you call it, grey, stippling it on, really brought, weathered the fence. On top of that, I suppose I could have gone in with a bit of a watch collet with a cream and just a couple of little edges where it chipped the wood. It's down to you guys, you know. How, how beautiful your terrain looks, it's really down to how much time you want to do it. I know you can do it guys because I see it on the Terrain X group all the time. And I know you're going to take this video and you're going to run with it and make awesome stuff that always puts me to shame, yeah, but always makes me happy. Yeah, and if you don't know what the Terrain Apps group is, it is our support group. Yeah, the link is in the description, guys. Come along, join the fun, yeah? It's an awesome group. Over 10,000 members so far. Breathe. So that's it, guys. Yeah, we've covered the painting, the, the little sort of black wash to get those, those grains in on the white one. That worked really well. And with the clump foliage, remember, I did just stipple the bases and just add the tiniest little amount. It's about breaking it up. It's not about bushing it up just about breaking it up guys. So, hopefully there's tons here for you to go with. And who would have thought there's that much on fences? But then again, this is me and I'm gonna give you everything I've got guys. So obviously, like it if you like it, share it if you know anyone who needs to make these and tell them to make them. Yeah, and as always guys, if you've got any questions, any comments, any suggestions, anything you'd like to, me to look at, down there in the comments. I am always going through my comments and I'm trying to catch up all the time. But if you ask a question, I will get back to you. If you give me a tip, I will read it. And if you say thank you, I'll either reply or you get a thumbs up, but I will see it, guys. Yeah, and then finally, yeah, all of this, this video, this studio, my time, all the stuff that's gonna go on after this video, happens because of a few good people in the community who appreciate what I'm trying to do to the community. Do to the community. Do for the community. <laughs> Calm down, bit of a Freudian slip there. Yeah, so I sort of rely on these good people, just making a simple pledge of a dollar a month via patron. You know, uh, the link he's all about, they'll appear on screen. It's just a dollar a month, yeah, it's per video. You select the number of videos you want to support. So if you want to support a dollar a month, dollar per video for three videos a month, you cap it at three videos, and the most you ever pay is three dollars. It's down to you, yeah, you've got the control over that. And if you're not into the monthly thing, yeah, remember, down below, there's a PayPal link. If you just want to say thank you for this, you know what I mean, because it's helped you with your hobby, or you just, it's, you know, it's part of your hobby time having this on in the background. I appreciate it, guys, because it's helping me grow, it's helping me make more videos, and it's helping me make better videos. And above all, it's helping me help the community, which it's got to be the most rewarding job I've ever had. But yeah, I need your help to keep that job going. So, please guys, if you like it, please support it. Patreon up there, yeah, PayPal down there. And if you're new to the channel, yeah, you can subscribe somewhere there as well. And there's a video, and I will see you soon, guys. Yeah, more urban stuff coming up. And remember, we've got the foreground map starting very shortly. All the best, yeah, ta -da.